I stood at the intersection of Broad and Central and thought back, and I could almost imagine the aroma of hot roasted peanuts drifting from Murphy's as I daydreamed of ham sandwiches on toast and cherry cokes from Gallagher's. I heard sounds of the Salvation Army bell ringers and listened for coins to drop in the kettles at the little wooden houses along the sidewalk in front of Murphy's. I turned, thinking I heard the clanging of a police call box and caught a glimpse of a beat cop answering a phone that once hung on a pole in front of the Gallagher's. Looking north, I saw a tall Paramount sign and a marquee announcing, Gone with the Wind, and envisioned hearing Clark Gable saying a cuss word for the first time in a movie. Across the street, I saw firemen struggling to hold onto a pumper truck as it pulled out from fire station number one while businessmen looked on from Mother Godwin's restaurant. Cabbies strained their necks from yellow cabs that lined the curb. The fire truck went north, passing boys and girls and moms and dads lined up to enter the YMCA, preparing to bowl in the basement alleys where automatic pin setters were unheard of. Looking south, I saw a busy green and white Ortman Stewart buses along the curb announcing park plates, lakeside, and other points of interest on the roll signs. The odor of tobacco and newly printed magazines drifted from the Broadway news and filled the air. Down the street past Reedy's, Carjack's Cafe, and another bowling alley across the street stood the journal which had been the news signal when my great uncle, Ed Frisch, had a hand in its construction. Farther down stood the old St. Paul German church where my great grandfather, David L. Frisch, had provided the 99,000 bricks to build it. And Ed Frisch, my great uncle, turned the first spade of soil. Looking east on Central, I recalled a drinking fountain that must have quenched the thirst of many shoppers in front of the old John Ross store, once the joy shop. Memories of bins of toys and oil-treated wood floors and five and ten cent items flooded my thoughts as Kresge's came to mind. There was the old city hotel that my great Aunt Mary Dell Frisch's father had built and operated for many years giving many a weary traveler rest after a long trip on the old canal. Farther along was the Castell building, where the corner drugstore provided elbow-to-elbow -elbow service and smelled of medicine and doctor's offices. Looking west past Murphy's, conjured up thoughts of soggy roast beef sandwiches and men-only backdoor entrances to Weber's Cafe and the odor of beer. Across the alley, another back door led to the scent of sawdust and raw meat and blood at the Mayor Meat Market, where Dad took me on Saturday mornings. We would load up in his 1939 Plymouth sedan and head for downtown from Miltonville, approaching from the west. To a kid, the skyscrapers and the old sword smoke signals the stacks belching Indian smoke signals were impressive, since we could see them from Mosman Road and beyond. Coming into town, we knew we were close when we heard the sound of the brick pavement and its mysterious iron rail tracks that seemed to come from nowhere. There were the Gardner Mills, the Manchester Machine, and the Gardner Harvey Ballpark, down in the hole is what we called it, where years later I would play on the Gardner Softball League. There was the old hydraulic canal, the 900 club, the turf bar, and the windy corner, where stylish hats would sometimes be picked up in a whirlwind and never seen again. On Main was Western Union, where my uncle Howard Frisch had once worked riding a bike to deliver urgent messages here and there. There was the Col Colony Restaurant, where Mom had her morning coffee on her way to work 
and Montgomery Ward. South on Main stood the majestic Sword Theater, and farther down was Sears and Roebuck. The windy corner included Oglesby Barnett's Bank, of which Great Uncle Ed had a part in its construction. Of course, there were the skyscrapers, the First National, and Middletown Federal. There was a time when taking a walk down Central Avenue was, to a kid, quite a thrill. Bumper to bumper traffic, horns hawking, neon lights flashing, five and ten cent stores, Roberson's sporting goods were a kid to dream. Famous Liberty hot dogs, which seemed much bigger back then, and the Greyhound bus station were smells of diesel fuel in big cities. This was the downtown that I hoped would reappear from the rubble of the deconstruction dust as I stood at the intersection of Broad and Central and remembered more innocent times.